Hey everyone, in our final lesson for this unit, we are going to be discussing vectors and scalars. We'll talk about how to add vector quantities together and how to resolve vector quantities into their components. Scalar quantities are measurements involving only magnitude. Magnitude means just how much. Examples of scalar quantities we'll use in physics are speed, mass, time, and volume. Scalar quantities actually don't make much sense if you do include a direction. Let's say you're looking at a recipe and it tells you to add three tablespoons of sugar south or two cups of flour to the right. That doesn't really make any sense. Vector quantities, on the other hand, require both a magnitude and direction to make sense. Vector quantities we'll be using a bunch in this class include velocity, force, and displacement. Many times, vector quantities don't make sense without directions included. Let's say you're telling your friend how to get to your house. You can't tell him just to go 3.2 miles, then 5.1 miles, then 1.9 miles. That doesn't make any sense. We need to include direction with each of those magnitude. If I ask you all to quickly, in your head, add 60 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour, most of you would not say that the answer is 100 miles an hour. The reason why this answer could be 100 miles an hour is because of the directions of these velocity vectors. Adding vector quantities isn't as neat and straightforward as adding scalar quantities. Adding vectors makes the most sense when drawn out. When you draw them head to tail and then connect the beginning of that drawing to the very end of that drawing, you end up with the resultant or the sum of those vectors. For example, if we have a four meter vector pointed to the right and we add a three meter vector also to the right, we end up with a seven meter vector to the right. This is pretty straightforward. We add these two vectors head to tail. We have four meters, then another three meters, and then if we were to draw the resultant from the start to the very end, the length of that vector would be seven meters, and the direction of that vector would be to the right. Well, that doesn't line up. Let's try that one more time. Four meter vector, put the three meter vector right there, tip to tail, there's our resultant vector. Let's say we're adding together a six meter vector to the right and a four meter vector to the left. Our resultant is gonna be a two meter vector to the right. Drawing them head to tail, we start with a six meter vector to the right, then we place this four meter vector beginning right here, and the resultant goes from beginning to end, two meters to the right. When we have vectors in line, it's pretty easy to see whether we should be adding or subtracting those magnitudes. But things get a bit more complicated when the two vectors are not pointed along the same axis. The process for adding these two is still the same though. We draw the first vector and add on that second one head to tail. The resultant is going to be the vector that connects the starting point and the ending point. When we work through problems like this, for the most part, we're gonna see that the vectors that we need to add form right angles. So the way that we can find the magnitude of our resultant vector is through Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully you guys are all familiar with that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We can also find the direction of this resultant vector using trigonometry. You may wonder in what context you would ever add vectors together. A common physics problem is something called a riverboat problem, where a boat travels across a river to the side while there's some current pushing that boat down as well. So let's say we have this canoe traveling across calm water. Obviously, the boat would just move in the direction that it's facing with whatever speed it's generating. If instead that boat is facing across the river but there is some current, we would add those two velocity vectors together to find the overall velocity of that boat with respect to the shore. If the current's moving faster, we end up with a larger resultant vector that points in a different direction. This isn't gonna come up too frequently, but when we have a problem where there is a vector that is not pointed exactly horizontal or exactly vertical, it's kind of diagonal, it's best to break it down into horizontal and vertical components. So vector addition 
is taking two vectors and looking at the resultant. Vector resolution, or breaking the vector into components, is looking at a diagonal vector and working backwards. Essentially, we're seeing how much horizontal space is this vector taking, and separately, how much vertical space this vector is taking. We're able to determine the horizontal and vertical components of vectors using right triangle trig and SOHCAHTOA. So let's say we have this vector A directed 30 degrees above the horizontal, up and to the right. Its vertical component, let's label A sub Y, and its horizontal component, let's label A sub X. Clearly, X and Y are going to be perpendicular to each other. So we have ourselves a right triangle. The original vector is our hypotenuse, while the components are the legs. So we can find the x component of this vector by using cosine, because remember, we're dealing with hypotenuse and the adjacent side to this angle. So, so we can just take this hypotenuse times the cosine of 30, and that gives us our x leg. To find the y leg, it's opposite of the 30 degree angle. So we could take the hypotenuse times the sine of 30, and that gives us our vertical component. Go ahead and try this out on your calculators. See if you can take this 20 meter per second vector that's directed 30 degrees above the horizontal and find the vertical and horizontal components. To find your x component, take 20 times the cosine of 30. To find your y component, take 20 times the sine of 30. You should end up with something close to 17 meters per second for your x component, or your horizontal component, and 10 meters per second exactly for your vertical or y component. And that is it for this lesson. As always, make sure you write down your questions, bring them to class next time we meet, and I will see you soon.